In January 2013, Ericsson gathered its worldwide executives in rural Tanzania as part of a six-month leadership development program called Global Perspectives. As a global company, Ericsson wants to prepare its leaders for an increasingly volatile and complex future where leaders and their teams will have to adapt to fast-changing realities around the globe. Ericsson wants its leaders to experience firsthand the global issues that are affecting customers in Tanzania and other developing markets, and in the process, explore ways that Ericsson technology can be used to address those issues. As our population increases, engaging corporations in solving these global issues is absolutely critical to the future of the planet. To help solve these problems, Ericsson leaders have come to study the leadership styles and strategies of local non-profit leaders who have successfully integrated social innovation and revenue-producing business models. So the NGO leaders have the purpose and passion that our Ericsson executives need. And the Ericsson executives have, this, have the technical skills and management that our NGO leaders need. So they are meeting at this X. They're meeting at this X, and, and this juncture is where they share. The idea began of how we develop leaders, uh, our emerging leaders. Uh, we have a program called Global Perspectives. We have all these global challenges, education and health. I think technology can do uh, a difference. Over the next week, they will participate in a series of exercises and programs that will challenge them to change perspectives about teamwork and collaboration and to help them better envision new possibilities for Ericsson. From the beginning I was maybe a little bit skeptical as well, like okay, where is this journey going and what is it really going to add for value? This program is about disconnecting from work, allowing us to push you off balance, and then re-envisioning, reconnecting, and seeing things from a new perspective. Developing empathy by learning about the issues that matter to people help the Ericsson leaders re-envision their own leadership story with intention and purpose. Visits to local schools like the Orkiswa Secondary School helped participants realize that many of these students have high personal goals, the same goals that we are used to in students in the West. My name is Kisuma Mkare. After I finish form 4, I'm willing to join A level. But after that, I'm willing to join also university, which I will be taking political science. Something that Ericsson execs discovered is that although the school has a decent number of computers, they don't have the resources to have an internet connection. Throughout the program, Ericsson leaders realized that Ericsson is uniquely poised to address the digital divide, the line between those who have internet and those who do not. By helping to connect communities to technology and the internet, Ericsson can help spur rapid progress in a number of important global issues. It's been really great uh, being here and really absorbing how their daily lives is and walking around and talking to them. For me, it's all about uh, do we make a difference with the work that we do as a corporation and company and I, and I really feel that and when I talk to the people about uh, what they do, um, how for instance telecommunications helps them, um, it really does. But also to understand some of the challenges that lies outside such as education, health, uh, uh, access to uh, information in general that we take for granted. You really feel it when you're here. Uh, it was very uh, intense to, to experience how people live out in the bush in a tribe like this for me. It's great to see all these people that are so happy on the side, the children especially. It's so natural, the, the friendliness and the enthusiasm. And I, I miss that a little bit in, in Europe and where everyone is quite individualistic and you don't really want to bother other people. And this is just so spontaneous and I, I like that a lot. So You see in their eyes that they are as amazed with us as we are with them. You really see um, the richness in the culture and the people and the warmth and working. You see a lot of potential, leadership potential. Uh, th that's beautiful, but the, the torn part in me is like, okay, how do we make sure that we really get that leadership, all the potential that we materialize on it? Because I think a lot of times we tend to focus more on the, on the daily operations than the long-term leadership planning.
it's so fascinating to see how if you're being pulled out of your normal context, how quickly you open up. The homestay was the chance to go really under the skin and, I mean, get the connections. The overnight stay is really designed to let our executives have a small taste of the NGO leaders' daily lives, to experience their daily challenges and how, as a community, they rise up and make something better. I found the homestay so extremely valuable because when we were together in that room, there were similarities, so many more than I would have expected to hear, but there were phenomenal number of similarities that I experienced. The homestay was a very humbling experience for me. The first impression I got was the simplicity of how they live. When they showed me my room, they had simply cleaned out the whole room for me. And I tried to argue with them that I shouldn't. I mean, I can sleep on the floor or you know, they can also stay in the room. It's the first time that I've been so close to an HIV positive person. It's amazing to see that well, with what she had gone through, she still has this fantastic view of the world. She's so happy. And then of course, seeing her three beautiful children was also really amazing. Uh, the evening went on and we sat down so she could tell her story. She got raped, which was how she conceived HIV. It's hard not to get touched by it. How it affected her life, how uh, her neighbors and family looked at her. And she decided that she wanted to make a difference. Yeah, so then later on in the evening we had dinner together. Um, I don't know what I really expected, but what I got was very nice. <laughs> they had made meat, rice, they had uh, done something called ugali, which I liked. The evening was, even though uh, filled with very serious conversations, was filled with laughter all the time. And I think that is primarily due to Angela. As I said, she has such a joyous view of uh, her life. It was a good night. I kind of took on the responsibility of making ugali the next morning for everyone. We sat down and I was actually assisted in making ugali and that was good fun. It turned out uh, well and we ate the ugali uh, for breakfast. So now I know how to make ugali. Being here in Tanzania has really allowed me to reflect over my past but also think about my future. It has given me the opportunity of coming closer to uh, my beliefs, my values, and it's definitely reinforcing my feeling of having a purpose in life and purpose with your leadership. I think if they walk away with a great video story about themselves and what that, what that means for everybody that they lead, in other words, how do they, because I think being able to, I mean, you've, you've seen it in all sorts of organizations, like good leaders that can tell their story. Why have we been focusing on this leadership story idea? It's well known in the literature of leadership that great leaders tell great stories. And it comes through in their, in their actions, and their words, and their ideas. A great storyteller is devoted to a cause beyond self. Even in today's cynical, self-centered age, people are desperate to believe in something bigger than themselves. You will never, ever be in this place again with these people. This is it. This is a rare and precious moment in your life to stop, disconnect, and try to connect with a very clear vision of yourself that you're gonna carry forward from here. So I encourage you to really take this time 
to try to nail that story. The individual pairing of groups of people together to talk and collaborate on their own leadership story was an important step for the group. The aim was to get each participant to look at their own lives and to find their own story showing their leadership path. The story would be kept in check by their own peers and would be distilled down to a four-minute presentation. You need to think about what is the most important thing that you want to bring forward and reduce down a little bit. I'm just being very practical at yeah. this point in time, yeah. 10, 13. For many, this was an emotional journey that they had to share. It was clear how the environment of Tanzania and being amongst such different lives highlighted the real important parts of their life's path. Now that you've been here for a few days and you really had an experience where you spent the night in someone's home, you got to know people at a deeper level, how has it changed your perspective? I've done a lot of courses and training in the past and with lots of models and management philosophies and, and lots of science behind it, but I feel that this is a different level. We go one level deeper now and you start really analyzing yourself and the choices you make and what you stand for. And I didn't see the value in that when we started, and now I already do. So that's really good. To see a place anew, you have to go very far away. So maybe part of doing this meant coming all this way to a place like Tanzania, that if you tried to do it in your office where you just got off three hours of conference calls and you've got a one and a half hour long calendar for leadership, or you might like followed by six more hours of meetings. Do you think you would have plugged into it? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, maybe that's what it requires the right place and the right moment and the right people and the right, you know. This is right. So, I, I put it in. I know I don't speak a lot because, like what doctors say, I'm an introvert and a very private person, but very emotional too. I've been in this kind of situation where we have to open up, and opening up is never easy. No. But we managed to. This kind of work of sharing, opening, there's great variability across cultures, how appropriate this is, across temperaments and personalities and so on. The leader's job is to tell stories, new identity stories, who I am, and that that allows others to sort of listen and just say, who am I? The same? Different? And so on. It's forging character. It's education. So thank you very much. Let me applaud you for sure. Yeah. At the end of the week, and uh, you can see in the eyes of uh, many participants this uh, passion and uh, willing to do more, become more with their organizations. We had uh, this experience together with the NGOs that have been just simply critical for the whole program. People really open themselves, the homestays, all the participants, and uh, you can't close a program like this without uh, celebrating victory. We all made uh, through the week. <laughs> the celebration was a way for us to say thank you for their hospitality and their friendliness, welcoming us to their village and their homes. I really liked it. I sort of felt like a proud parent. <laughs> <laughs> So it was fun, emotional, and uh, and I think if I have a, a word, one word for this week, it was it was magical. <laughs>